What is up everyone, today we'll be looking at the cheapest pre-built gaming PC I could find. For this, I added some requirements for determining the cheapest gaming PC. For starters, I wanted the PC to be brand new and never used before. Secondly, it has to have a dedicated graphics cards, which don't include the really low-end ones like the GT710 as these cards are not made for gaming and will provide a less than ideal experience. Finally, it has to look pretty decent for a gaming PC, as we all know that RGB makes a PC faster. After some quick looking around, I found this PC for £360 or about $500 and it was built to order. The specs of this PC include an AMD Ryzen 5 3400G, 8GB of a data, DDR4 2666MHz RAM, a Sapphire RX 570 4GB graphics card, 240GB SSD and an 80 plus 500W PSU. It also includes the CIT7 Rainbow RGB case. Inside the box we also get some accessories including a power cable and various manuals and driver discs. Also included is a Wi-Fi dongle which I didn't order so that's pretty good to have. On the back, we have one HDMI, one DisplayPort, and one DVI from the graphics card. Then on the motherboard, we have some legacy connectors for your mouse and keyboard, DVI, HDMI, four USB 3 ports, and two USB 2 ports, as well as an Ethernet and the audio jacks. On the top, there is a power button and the front panel USB 2 ports. Ideally, these would be USB 3, but it's a cheap case, so... In this case, I opted for the Ryzen 5 3400G. It contains integrated graphics, meaning the motherboard video ports can be used if we take out the graphics card. They did have the option for the Ryzen 3 3100, which would be cheaper and better, but I wanted to test this PC without the graphics card as well, since this PC would be even cheaper at £280 without a dedicated graphics card. The PC itself is well built and has good cable management, so quite a good deal there. There are some problems with this PC and I'll get into that now. Firstly, the side panel was a bit scuffed and I think there may have been like some pre protective film on there and I don't actually know it so we'll just ignore this part. Although I ordered a Cooler Master PSU, they actually put in an Aerocool Integrator PSU, AC Plus Bronze. I'm sure this PSU is fine and it has 500 watts as well. But the Cooler Master MWE White is quite a bit better according to the LTT PSU tier list. The Cooler Master is a tier B of the list and the Aerocool Integrator is in tier D, so not exactly great. For some reason they also left out the PCIe cover when they put the graphics card back on. So there's quite a big gap at the back and it looks just bad. This case is the CIT7 case and it's really cheap and just really bad to be honest. The RGB lights are super bright and quite annoying and the whole case is just poorly made with sharp edges and corners throughout. It does at least have a nice PSU enclosure which keeps all the cables tidy. If you do buy this PC I recommend you change the case as there are a lot better options that won't cut you for a little 10 to 20 pound more and they have USB 3. And now we have some benchmarks. First up we have Red Dead Redemption 2 using a mix of ultra and high settings at 1080p. We see an average frame rate of 32.7 with a 1% low of 25.7 and 0.1% low of 9.5 FPS. I would say this is very playable and you could turn down the settings to get better FPS if you actually wanted to. Without the graphics card installed though, using the integrated graphics, we had to turn the game down to the lowest at 900p to get an average of 30.6 FPS with a 1% low of 19.7 and a 0.1% low 7.5 FPS. This was harder to play and not ideal. Next we have CSGO in which on the highest settings at 1080p we had an average of 145 FPS. This is great when playing an esports title as you need a good amount of FPS. Ideally you would have turned down the settings to low to get a lot more FPS in game though. Without the graphics card it was, the game was still playable but at low settings with an average FPS of 132. Next we have GTA 5, an older but still great game to benchmark with. We had the game on the highest settings at 1080p and it achieved an average FPS of 31. 
the 1% lows and what 0.1% lows were 24 FPS and 22 FPS respectively, which is really good. Without the graphics cards, we had to turn things down to normal slash low, which achieved an average FPS of 41. Next we have Resident Evil 3 at high slash ultra settings at 1080p. We got an average frame rate of 47 FPS with 1% lows of 6.7 and 0.1% lows of 4.2. Without the RX 570 we got about 43 FPS but this was at medium settings. Rocket League at the highest settings at 1080p achieved an average FPS of 148.8 with 1% lows of 69.5 and 0.1% lows of 34.2. Without the graphics cards at the highest settings, we got an average FPS of 37. Tomb Raider next at the highest settings crashed, saying something about not enough resources, so I turned it down to high settings. We got an average FPS of 54 at 1080p, with 1% lows of 37.2 and 0.1% lows of 28 FPS. Without the RX 570, we had to turn the game down to low to get an average FPS of 28. Rainbow Six Siege gave us a good FPS of 125.2 at very high settings 1080p with a 1% low of 78.6 and a 0.1% low of 37.1 FPS. Without the GPU we got an average FPS of 91 at medium settings. I tested Watch Dogs 2 next, which is an older game and not too demanding, and I'm not sure why I really tested this game because I don't think anyone plays it anyway. But we got an average FPS of 63.5 with 1% lows of 48.2 and 0.1% lows of 42.4 at high settings 1080p. Without the graphics card we got 39 FPS at medium settings. Finally we have Fortnite, a game that I suck at. On 1080p at epic settings we got, well nothing because I lost the file, but on the screen you can see it's around 53 FPS. Without the GPU we got an average FPS of about 17 on epic settings. Cinebench gave us a score of 4197 which shows it's around the older i7s in terms of performance. 3D Mark we got a score of 3530, which is really good for a PC of this price. Overall, this PC is actually really good, and I recommend anyone to buy, go and purchase one. This PC was however bought back in November, so with the GPU prices it might be harder to get.